how much more so do you value the rest of your brain and your whole, you know, your consciousness? You know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul? You know, so you wouldn't give up your eyes because they're precious to you. Your life is precious to you, right? Both of you, you know, you, you, have, you have a sanctity of life within yourself and you have a fear of death. You know, you're not just going to go jump off a bridge because you don't really care whether you die, right? Please yeah. don't. No. You know, um, and there's a reason for that. You know, we have a we have a conscience. We have a we have a knowledge of right and wrong built into us. You knew it was wrong when you lied, right? Yeah. You know, but you did it anyway. You knew it was wrong when you stole. You know, even if you try to justify it, you know deep down that there's something. That's how a polygraph test works. There's like a physiological change in your body. You know, body temperature, uh, heart rate, and yeah. all these things. Because your body's telling you, no, don't do that. You know, because we have something hardwired into us. You know, that... Well, your, no, your body's not telling you, no. Your brain is that's telling what I mean. your yeah, body. That's, yeah, but like it's telling your body to stop. To stop doing what it's doing. That's what I mean. But, you know, there's just something inside of us. You know, conscience literally means with knowledge. Con means with, science means knowledge. Yeah. You know, so you have a conscience, and you violated that conscience, and it speaks, on, you know, on your behalf right now. It's, you know, it's, it's basically incriminating you right now. So if you guys are concerned about what's going to happen, you know, because I'm concerned about you guys, you seem like nice people, you know? You know you, you... Are you concerned about yourself too? Yes. So because seven, seven, seven years ago, I came across some very good news. Now, this good news is only good news if you are concerned. Because seven years ago, June of 2007, I realized the severity of my situation. I realized that there was a day that I was going to die some point in time and that I was going to have to face God and I knew that I was not able to enter into heaven you know because it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God so you're right when you said that like we're all yeah straight up no one's God exactly but on their own there isn't a heaven that there is a heaven how is there if no one's gone in it what proof God, do you have God resides is? in heaven so well, how gonna, do you know it's a place for us to go it's the question the only question like, the only thing is do you want to know what God did for you so you won't have to go to hell. Because it doesn't I have to. So if you don't go to heaven, you don't go to hell. You, go to hell. you see, there's, there, there's a whole thing. You don't have to go to hell. Like, you know the scene in Pirates of the Caribbean when Jack Sparrow had his gun? You don't have to go to hang hell. Hang on, hang on. What is this? In, remember, l listen, I got, I, got a, I got a point here. So Let's in the, hear it. the scene of Pirates of the Caribbean when, when Jack Sparrow has his gun pointed at Will Turner and he said, this shot is not meant for you. You remember that scene? This is a movie. Exactly, but it's an <laughs> illustration. It's but he had, he had a gun pointed against somebody. Yeah. And he said, this shot is not meant for you. This is what God is telling you right now. This shot is not meant for you. You are not supposed to take God is telling this. Jack Sparrow. No, God no. is telling you. He's telling me. Yes, and you. He's telling you, this is not meant for you. I don't want you to go there. And that's what I, that why I but do But then we I can't do. go up either. So what's meant for us? It's not, it's not that. It's, you got to get to the point. Way. See, the thing is. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. So that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, the thing is, there's a price that has to be paid. I don't want to. You don't want everlasting life? You've made your bed in hell? What would you do? Well, in hell, you're still everlasting. Yes, and, but it's everlasting you're alive. torment. It's either everlasting life or it's everlasting torment. How do you know? Have you been there? The Bible says so. The Bible, the Bible also says you can't get into heaven if you follow the Ten Commandments. It's physically, it's like it's impossible. You but you see, there, get to hell. there's a point. There is a there is a chain of grace throughout the entire Bible. There is a theme where ever since the first person who sinned, God said, "I'm going to send somebody to pay this price for you." There is a price on each one of each one of our heads. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, like without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So Jesus Christ shed His blood on your behalf. For God so loved you that he sent his only son to die on the cross. You see, that, that death that he, that he did, we all God's son? you can become God's a children? son of God through so, his son. So You have to be born again. And I'm not talking about reincarnation. I'm talking about being born of the Spirit of God. So technically, is Jesus not God's only son? Because we're all God's children He is his only well. begotten son. But he's got brothers, and we're Jesus. all his brothers. So have you been to a Christmas pageant? Have you been to like son. a Christmas pageant when you were a kid? Yeah, I went to well, church. You know, so you've, you've heard the word Emmanuel, right? Yeah. Emmanuel means God with us. Yeah. Jesus was God with us. He dwelt among us, and he came to pay that price that, that's on your head. Yeah. For every lie you've ever spoken, you've ever told, every thought that was rebellion against God, every word that you've spoken against God, uh, you know. He came to pay that price for you. Yeah. There's a price. There's a price that had to be paid, and I realized that seven years ago. And that price is only through 
the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, death happens to everybody. We're all going to die eventually. You have no idea how long it's going to be before you die. It could be 50 years from now. It could be 15 minutes from now. You don't know. 150,000 people die every day within a 24-hour period. 150,000 people. How many of them do you think are making plans for the next week? You know? Yeah. They're not aware. They're not, you know, so please just consider this. You know, consider, you know, there's nothing more important than your eternal salvation. Truly nothing more important. You know, the, defini the very definition of righteousness is a right standing with God. Yeah. You know, it's not a matter of happiness. It's not a matter of, you know, joy and prosperity. It's a matter of a right standing with God. And the only way to have a right standing with God is through Jesus Christ. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just got to, like, apologize. What? Do I, do I apologize to Jesus? Well, you know, it's, you know, you, you ask for forgiveness. You turn from your sin. Not just confess it, but, like, run from it. So I can only give somebody, can I commit any, any crime? Absolutely. But any crime why, why would you want to? Knowing the price that had to be paid, why would you want to? Well, what's the price if I just say I'm sorry? The price was, the price was paid by Jesus Christ. Why would you want to subject him to that more? No, he means in the past. He committed oh, anything okay, in the I past see, he I can be forgiven you. for. So, you know, the thing is, to turn from your sin. Like this guy's somebody, done a lot of bad things. If somebody hands you a dead fish that smells really bad, yeah. what are you going to do with it? You're going to throw it on the ground, and you're going to run. Why? Because it's a dead fish, and it smells bad. So? Who's handing me this fish? I don't know. That's a good one. I like I'm that. just using illustrations to make, you know, to help things make sense. But, you know, but if somebody gives you, or if you know somebody has, like, a very highly contagious disease, you're going to yeah. run from that person. I suppose. You know, you're going to turn away, and you're going to run. Yeah. And that's what sin is. It's a contagious disease. And you're going to, you, you know, just run from that sin. You know, run towards Jesus Christ. You know, put put on the Lord Jesus Christ like you would put on a parachute if you're in a plane that's about to crash. Yeah. You know, you're not just gonna you're not gonna examine that parachute if that plane's about to crash. If somebody's if the captain of the plane says put this on and you'll live, you're gonna put it on, and you know that that plane that that the plane's gonna crash and that parachute's gonna save you. It's the only thing that can save you. Yeah. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just a matter of believing it. It's actually putting him on and trusting in him because that's all. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, you've just completely destroyed my whole argument. But listen, let me get one of my business cards. <laughs> it was great talking to you guys. Yeah. Would you, would you mind talking, you know, sometime in the future? Like, you guys have Facebook? <laughs> no. no. No? Good for you. You're a lot better off that way. Yeah. <laughs> do you have email, though? No. We live here. Okay. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. You get, did you guys go to Rhinebeck High? Yeah. Oh, okay. Listen, it was great what year are you? Guys. 